Well, hello, hello. Welcome to the Train Buddy Shop. We've got an interesting challenge today. We're going to take this ready to roll Athern Critter. I guess that's what it is. It's an EMD Model 40 black. And the customer wants, you guessed it, sound. So we're going to put sound in an EMD. 40. So let's get it out of the package and let's get rolling. Okay, so we've got some opportunities here. Um, one, it says it's an EMD Model 40 diesel. And if we look at the, the actual um, package here and what's on it, it uh, looks like uh, it says Boston and Maine. Um, so we should look up a Boston and Maine, um, mechanism. It already has a DN-136 PS decoder in it, um, and that's, you know, fairly small and at the top. I imagine what we're probably going to have to do is remove everything out of it, uh, in order to get both decoder and speaker in there, but we'll see. We'll see when we get there. Um, we've got uh, several options here. Um, I had uh, quoted a, an Eco uh, 100 diesel, and unfortunately uh, that is no longer available, the 882001. I may have pulled that for him, but uh, again, it not being available, I don't want to use that as part of the video. Um, we have two other opportunities. We've got uh, the older Tsunami. Uh, as you can see, it's a GE Cummings uh, center cab. And this is this would typically be what we would see in a 40 ton. This particular 40 tonner, though, uh, says EMD on it. And the EMD means that it was a Detroit diesel. Detroit diesel 6-71, as it says, says... Uh, uh, from Wikipedia, which I no doubt is, is correct at this point. Uh, I have no reason to believe it's not. Um, that means that uh, neither one of these is right. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, Soundtracks doesn't make one that, uh, that, that is a Detroit 6-71 because many of these sound very, very similar uh, it's a typical diesel or a s smaller diesel engine. And uh, listening to the sounds, uh, the 671 has got a, a fairly throaty sound to it. Uh, the Cummings diesels uh, are, are typically um, lighter in sound, if that's a, if that's a term that I can use. Uh, they're less silent, not as throatier, but that may have something to do with the exhaust, may not be the engine at all. So uh, either one of these is, is fair game. I'm going to try this one only because uh, it is specifically a GE. I don't know. Let's see what fits. I'm, I'm going to try a little physical fit here on either one to see which one goes. Uh, speaker, there's just no, no question uh, we're going to use this speaker, which is the, the mini cube. And we're going to find a good place for that. Um, uh, I, I'm pretty sure this is what's going to use. But as you see, um, you know, this is part of the part of the issue with uh, with doing these and, and doing decoders. It's you're trying to figure out what's going to fit and what is the best sound, especially when you have a situation like this where there there is no good sound. Okay, so. Hold on while we get this thing squared away here and I'll get it open and we can take a look. Alrighty then, nothing, nothing special here. We're going to take a look and see how, how to get it open. Uh, it says it's got some main PC board and a jumper board and God knows what else it's got in here. But we're going to open it up and that's our key is to find out how to get into it. Uh, coupler boxes and screws. Well, let's see what we got. We got four screws down here. Let's take the the couplers 
couplers off first. Uh, typically, that's the easy way in. If they'll if they'll come off, uh, then we can pull the rest. It looks like uh, these have got some some KD number 148s with the little I don't know if you can see that or not, but little whiskers on them. And where, where did the screw go? There it is. Screw in the cap. Do the same thing over here. And see if this will come apart. Uh, one of the things about some of these smaller engines is that the pickup, there's not a lot of capability for pickup. You've got, uh, you know, four wheels. That's it. So if one of them's dirty, you know, half of 50% of your thing is not working. Uh, let's see. Maybe I have to take the other two screws out. Mm, the other two screws look like they'll take the fuel tank out, but that's it. That's it. Do what we got to do. And then maybe the fuel tank will have, uh, under the fuel tank will be some more screws maybe, huh? Doesn't look like it based on the explosion. That's, uh, that's the other thing too, is make sure that you, you keep your, keep your documentation, even if you have to put it in a, in a notebook, um, I started doing that a long, long time ago, keeping my documentation in a notebook. Did I ever use it? Yeah, not much, but uh, it was there. Is there any orientation here that I need to be aware of? Doesn't look like it. Uh, this is not the typical. This is not your your typical where there's this uh, um, uh, fill valve on one side or towards the cab. The cab has got doors all the way around it, so doesn't matter okay watch your watch your railings as you're taking it apart now hmm 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 hmm, hmm. all right let me see what's going on here and oh this is a split wow 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 okay look at the looking at the instructions right so Here's an, an outside, here's an outside uh, piece of metal on the inside. This is a split frame, split frame, and uh, typically split frames are difficult to do because there's usually no room. So the only room is what's up in the cab. So we'll have to make sure that it all goes in the cab um, on this particular one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not real fond of split cap, split uh, split frame uh, ones, but we'll we'll get it. Okay, so time out while I figure out how to get into this. Okay, so apparently I don't really need to take the bottom off. I just because it's got the motor and the gears are already in there, uh, it's not really relevant. I really just need to get into the cab, and so uh, the cab itself lifts off as we can see here in the. In that and it's got two tabs in the front and back so squeezing them together uh, it may be difficult but we're going to try it that way um, we want to gently very 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 gently so let me find my special tweezers very gently take these away from the cab oh look it just it just fell out that's good Sometimes they're really hard to, to come out. And, oh, we're, we're losing. Oh, oh, well. This happens. I mean, it's just, oh. Did you see that? It just flew right across the room. Here we go. There we go. Put that down. Have to put that on later. All right. Let's, uh, let's try to try to not lose everything. Let's take that one off, too, while we're at it. If it's all coming off, let's take them off. All right. And pull that one out. Okay, now the cab should be should be free uh, to uh, to remove. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to kind of kind of pry it up. Let's see if it'll we can do that. We may have to go back to uh, taking the bottom out again. Ever so gently. Ever so gently. Okay, doesn't look like it's coming out 
easily. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the handrail off altogether. I just don't want to mess it up. All right. Later on, when we're done, we can we can put them back and just take them out. Don't want to have a problem. All right, now now that I now that I've got this, uh, sometimes they're the tricky part, knowing that the tabs are down at the bottom of the door, they're, they're right here, right? And they're coming coming this way, they're coming out this way. Let me see if they can get to them. Oh, oh, look, look, oh, oh, uh, duh. All right, so underneath here, we can actually see the tabs. Here's the tab here, right? And because we can see the tabs, we can actually play with them with the with the screwdriver and we can push against the tab right push against the tab like this and again good thing i took the took the railings out push 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 and just just enough and if you can see that or not just enough to get that thing started right there put my my chisel blade if you don't have a chisel blade, uh, exacto knife, you need to get one. I think they're number 17, I think is the is the blade number on them. Make sure you get a chisel blade. All right, and then, and then this one, again, I'm, I'm prying up on it, but what I really need to do is loosen that. And the way I'm going to loosen it, again, is by pushing on the on the little tab in, in this, this direction, right? In, right? Push, 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 and it, I don't know if you heard that or not, but I heard it go crack, which is what we want to hear. Right? We don't want it to hear. You don't want to hear bust, but you, you do want to hear it release. And oftentimes, uh, if they're doing this from the factory, they're going to put a they're going to put glue on it sometimes. So, but this one, uh, someone's already been into it uh, to put in the decoder. The original decoder that's in there now, uh, the DN-136. So now this, the secret is to keep that open, right? So using toothpicks while you do the other side. Now this is the hard part. Uh, a flat toothpick would have worked well in there rather than the, the round one. If you get a, could get a flat toothpick in the side there and, and pry it in there and hold it. I'm going to try to hold it with my hand now while I do the other side. Okay. And again, pushing pushing the pins toward the center. Uh, did you hear it? It went crack. And again, on this side, pushing the pin towards the center. And pushing out as you're doing the same thing. You might you want to put it in at an angle. Right? Like this. I, I know you can't see this. I can feel it. I can feel the crack. Okay, so I, I've got I've got it cracked on this side. Both, both. There you go. Now I heard I heard the whole thing go crack, crack, crack. Okay, so we should be able to just pull it off now. You can see the split. There we go. And it looks like the, the pieces, the front and back, are going to come with it. Not really what we wanted. There you go. Ta da! All right, we're in. We're in. Okay, so there's there we go. We got the two two halves, right, with the pickups. So there's the wires for the pickups. Here's the decoder. We're going to take this out. Take this decoder out. And we're going to take the light board out. Okay. Don't know what kind of lights it has in it. We just, we assume that they're LEDs. I didn't test it to see what's going on. There's a DM136. We're giving that back to the customer. This light board's in the way. It's just it's just in the way. Okay. And let's see if we can kind of push on this. And see what we've got. It looks like uh, looks like from the, the diagram that they're LEDs. Oh, that's nice. 
Oh, and one of the wires broke loose from the LED. So, okay. So we need to uh, need to repair that anyhow. Okay. All right. So we're in here. All right. Run on this side. Uh, LED, LED, LED. Uh, doesn't look like it looks like the the resistor is on the board. So, so we'll need to uh, to adjust that. Uh, let's see how's the board being held on here. A wing and a prayer, as they say. Feels like it's being held on here with something. Nope, nope, just a bunch of pins. Just a bunch of pins. Okay, so we have a we have the the power is coming from here and here, like left and right. right? So the first thing we're gonna do is let's disconnect the the truck power. And the easy way is just cut them off. Alrighty then, we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit while we can, while we can, and I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting this board out. I mean, it's just, it's pretty straightforward. The, the lights are left and right, and I'm gonna get as much of this as I can. I'm not gonna save the board. Um, there's no sense doing that. It takes up an awful lot of room. Matter of fact, it's almost as much room as the decoder. So, we'll leave that. The motor leads are coming up through the center here. You can see them and, uh, and cutting those out. Uh, we'll, uh, assuming left and uh, red, is, um, red is red or positive, that's typical uh, for, the, for these guys. Um, and now we've got an ex another piece we're going to give back to the customer. But now we're ready to go. Um, oh, look, we, there's a standoff here. There's a plastic standoff, which is holding, uh, holding nothing. It was there to, to push this board up high and keep it from, uh, from shorting out or whatever. Uh, we don't need that. As a matter of fact, we can probably take these out and remove that all together. I'm going to do that just so we can get some more room. But, but, and this is a big but, right? I want to hold on to this. And this screw, this little screw that's here, maybe, you can see that? Can you see it? Did I, did I, but yeah, there it is. Um, Gotta keep checking. Uh, that that screw may be too deep after we take this out, but I'm gonna try, try it out. Cause I need as much room in here as I can possibly get. All right, here we go. Gone. That goes back to the customer also. Now I'm gonna need the screws again, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a trial fit here, just to make sure that it's gonna. They're going to stay in there. Uh, in a split frame, one of the hardest things to do is to get uh, the, the left and right truck lead. So that's what this is. Right. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down and see if it, if it went far enough. Ah, yes. Oh, good. oh baby. Okay, good. So... So the screws are not bottoming out and leaving this loose. So this is good. Uh, left and right here is uh, is relative. Uh, this probably doesn't even have a front on the marked on it like uh, many of them do. Oh, it does. It's got an F right there on the. See it? So the F there is the front. And uh, 
and typically the right hand going forward. Right, so it's going in this direction, going that way. Right? And so the right hand wheel pickup is this block of metal, left hand block of metal over here. So it's black on the left and red on the right. Okay. Red on the right. And as we are wont to do, we're going to test the motor, and the motor leads out. And the motor is is insulated from the frame, right? And we're going to now just go ahead and take a little bit of insulation off of each one of these wires here and here, just like this. And then we're going to test the motor. So let's see if we can do that. And you, where you can see it. All right, come on, get in there. And do it with that. Cutting my finger or just cut the wire. There we go. Got it. All right, so I'm going to take this out of the way for the moment. So we can still look at it and we can watch it. Now remember, this way is forward, that way. Okay, so we are going to make an assumption, and the assumption is that the red wire on the motor is positive. So red is positive, black is negative, and we actually have a, uh, a power pack set up here. I'm just going to make it 5 volts, and we're just going to touch these. Don't do much to it. I'm just going to touch it. We're going put to the, put the black one on there. I'm going to see if I can get the black one touching. Because all we want to find out is which way it's going with, with the plus and minus on the leads. Yeah, my luck, it's not going to Oh, there it goes. So you can see it's moving and it's moving and it's moving and it's moving in that direction. So we are correct that the red here is the positive motor lead. Now somebody would say, yeah, so what? Um, and the answer is not a lot. It's you try to put plus and minus on these leads. I made this discussion yesterday in the, at the in the shop here. You try and put the plus and minus uh, correctly on the on the decoder. Uh, the decoders themselves have got orange, orange and gray for motor leaders. So, so the orange is to red and gray is to black. So that makes a little bit of sense, I guess. And then again, red and black is the input into the decoder as to, for the motor leads, or for, I'm sorry, for, for the track pickup, right and left. Now, if, if you had mixed either one of those two up, yeah, you can fix it with the CVs. And, and I hear guys go, hey, can't you fix it with the CV? Yeah, you can, but that's not, uh, what you want to do is leave it uh, like it should be as much as possible so that if you decided to take this to a DC layout, I'm just going, well, why would you want to do that? Well, some people do. So, and, and, and you're a pro if you're doing this, you want to make sure that it's as close to, to pro type as possible and don't screw these up. So, if it's on a DC uh, environment, the decoder is going to go, oh, it's going to pick up from here and here, and it's going to connect this to the red and the black to the black. And so it's going to go in that direction. On an American layout. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is the reason why you test these kind of things. This is a Bach, this is an Atherin engine, Atherin engine. If this was a Bachman engine, these two may be reversed. And this may be reversed. You don't know. That's the reason why you test it. You don't make any assumptions here. Okay? Uh, same way, by the way, while we're talking about this, same way on the LEDs. Typically, red is the positive lead. Black is the negative lead. And this is important because guess what? If if you get those backwards, it doesn't work. You know, it doesn't even light up. Yep. Doesn't even light up. All right, we're ready to uh, make a, a little trial here to see which one of these is going to fit. Uh, that looks like that'll fit pretty good, doesn't it? Well, maybe not, huh? Maybe not. 
it's going to come awful close. We could, I guess, we could file back the two edges here on this, right, and get, get this to be work out there. Uh, we can do a little bit of measurement. Oh, my goodness, we're going to actually measure something? I don't know. See what we got here. We, we've got uh, 1.1685 uh, to work with, or 1.17, somewhere in that neighborhood. We're going to look here on the decoder. Oh, almost, almost exactly that on here. Okay, almost. I mean, it'll fit, but you know, I have to scrunch the wires up in order to make that fit. Let's look at this other one and see where we are with this one. Oh, you know what? That may be a better fit anyhow. Yeah, that might just be a better fit. All righty then, let's um, let's let's try let's try this one, and uh, and see if we can get it all up in there like it's supposed to. Okay, let me open a pack. Okay then, so last we left and I was trying to find a space for the decoder and for the speaker and I think I found it. So we're going to put it up in here. Um, here's the decoder. And we can put it, I think we're going to put it on the side like about like that. And the speaker and speaker, speaker down and it will fit up in the cab up in here like that. Oops. Big fingers. All right, we're going to do something like this. So then the question really is, okay, it doesn't quite go all the way up in there. Is that okay? So one way to find out is to take, take this and put it, put it on there to see where we are. And it looks pretty close. It looks like it's gonna gonna make it. So we're gonna say that it is here, and we're gonna go for it. So that's our modus operandi. All right. Now one of the things we're gonna have to do is obviously we're gonna have to hook the wires to the speaker and the speaker up there, and we're gonna have to mount, somehow mount this uh, decoder and mount the speaker up in the top here. So let's, um, let's get rid of any excess across the top. Uh, one way to do that is with a, with an X-Acto knife. So we're going to find an X-Acto knife that's got a, got a good blade on it. I'm just going to, just going to kind of Carve the top out of here, so not much. Don't have to really do much there. Alrighty then.